Good morning to you, good morning to you. We're all in our places with sun shining faces. Oh, this is the way to have a good day. Hello, my sweet students. Happy May. It's good to see you again. It's time for another music class. We have a wonderful class plan today. We have a new song to sing. And because it's a new month, we have a brand new composer to learn about. I'm super excited. Okay, let's kick things off by singing through our scales. Do, re, mi, fa, so. Okay, wonderful. So we are going to move into our rhythm now. So our rhythm today is going to feature a new note value that some of you might not recognize. So we're just gonna do a little bit of lesson before we start. Okay, so here is our rhythm chart. You might notice that there's an extra rhythm at the very bottom. That is our 16th note. So the 16th note, it looks like an eighth note with an extra tail, and it gets a quarter of a beat. So if you think about four quarters make a dollar, that's like a one quarter. So one quarter of a beat, four of those will make a whole beat, a quarter note. So just like an eighth note, you can have a single 16th note, and it'll look like it's got those two tails reaching out. And you can have 16th notes that are connected to each other. So on the right side of your screen, that's what two 16th notes connected looks like. And on the left side of your screen, that's what four 16th notes look like connected. These are both very, very common ways to see the 16th note. Probably more common than just seeing one by itself. So to reiterate, two 16th notes is the same length as one eighth note, which means that four 16th notes would be the same as one quarter note. Another way to learn this or to help you remember how many beats each note gets, think about it this way. A whole note is four beats. So it means that it only takes one to do an entire measure or it only takes one to take up the whole of the measure. Whole note, whole of the measure. Moving forward, if you have a half note, that's two beats per measure, which means it takes two of them to take up a 4-4 measure. Or a half note takes up half of the measure. Moving down the line, our quarter note, one beat per measure, in a 4-4 measure, it takes four quarter notes to fill the measure. Or, if you're in fractions, a quarter of the measure. Then, we have our eighth notes, half beat per measure. And what that means is that it takes eight of them to take up a whole measure. You can even stop and count them if you don't believe me. One and two and three and four and eight beats. Or, an eighth note, an eighth of the measure. 
So lastly, they're kind of tiny down there because there's so many of them, but our 16th notes gets a quarter of a beat. What that means is it takes 16 of them to fill a measure, a 16th note. All right, so now that we're a little bit more familiar with our 16th note, it's time to see some different uses of it in your rhythms. So the first way you might see it is four 16th notes in a row to make one beat. That would be one, E, and a. Uh. We put a different syllable on each one so we can tell which 16th note is in the first slot, the second, the third, and the fourth slot. So just repeat after me. One, E, and a. Uh. Perfect. So if you do that four times in a row, you have a measure of all 16th notes. So let's try that all together. One, two, ready, go. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Perfect. So, 16th notes can look a little scary when you see all those notes in one measure, but really, you can make it super easy by taking it really slow, or you can make it a little more difficult by taking it really fast. The tempo controls the difficulty, not the amount of notes. So, keeping that in mind, let's look at this next example. So this is a rhythm that we actually worked with a few weeks ago when we were listening to Grieg's Holberg Suite. So you should feel a little bit familiar with it. What this one does is it attaches an eighth note to two sixteenth notes. So we're going to say one and a. Uh. So the eighth note is going to take care of the one and the e that we had before. So we're just going to say one and a. Uh because the eighth note is twice as long as the sixteenth note, right? So what that's going to sound like is one and a two and a three and a four and a. It's kind of an exciting rhythm. It makes you feel like you're going forward, almost like you're riding a horse or something, okay? So let's try clapping that one all together. One, two, ready, go. One and a two and a three and a four and a perfect all right last one before we look at our official rhythm for today this one we have two sixteenth notes and then an eighth note so the eighth note is going to count for the and and the ah uh. so we'll just say the and because we're holding through it so it'll sound like one e and pretty simple right Let's try the whole measure, okay? One, two, ready, go. One E and, two E and, three E and, four E and. That's all there is to it. If you're still a little bit shaky on this, don't worry. It's your first lesson. It'll make a lot more sense in the coming weeks. All right, so here is our official rhythm for this week. This is actually also going to be the rhythm for the song that we're singing. So we're double dipping. It's going to really help us out later in the lesson. So the first thing I want you to notice is the time signature. 4-4. Four, four. four beats per measure. Quarter note gets the beat. I may sound like a broken record, but this is really important. Can you say that with me? Four beats per measure, quarter note gets the beat. Very good. The second thing I want you to notice is there's these kind of funny looking brackets on the beginning and end of each line. Those are called repeat signs. So when you see one that's closing on the end, you have to find the one that was before and you have to do all of that one more time. Just once, so you repeat it one time. Same with the bottom. So I circled the ones in red that connect to each other. So you're gonna basically do that whole first line twice, and the whole second line, the turquoise one, twice too. This is another symbol that should be familiar to you from when we did Grieg's Holberg Suite. It's coming up a lot. 
All right, so now that we have a little bit of a road map, here's our rhythm with all of the numbers written in. You'll notice we have a lot of opportunities to play with our new 16th notes. So let's get started. I'm going to take it really slow. There'll be time to go fast later. Okay. One and two and three and a four and a... One and a two E and three and rest. Good. And then when we're doing it the real deal, we'll do all of that again because of the repeat sign, right? Okay, so now looking at that third measure, the first one on the bottom line goes like this. One, two, Three E and a four and a. One and a two E and three and rest. Perfect. And then what would we do with those last two lines? We'd Repeat them. Okay, wonderful job. Let's try it all together, repeats and all. All right, one, two, ready, go. One and two and three e and a four and a one and a two e and three and rest. Repeat. One and two and three e and a four and a one and a two e and three and rest. One, two, three e and a four and a one and a two e and three and rest. Repeat. One, two, three e and a four. And a one, and a two, e, and three, and rest. Good job! How'd you feel? If you felt good, let's try it a hair faster. If you didn't feel as good, you need a second run at it. Rewind it about 30 seconds. Try it one more time. Challenge yourself. Okay, a hair faster. One, two, ready, go. One, and two and three e and a four and a one and a two e and three and rest repeat one and two and three e and a four and a one and a two e and three and rest one two three e and a four and a one and a two e and three and rest repeat one, two, three, e, and a four, and a one, and a two, e, and three, and rest. Beautiful job, my friends. Okay, so now it's time to take a look at our song. Okay, so our song today is called Bim Bum. And it's got some funny lyrics to it. They're all just kind of made up nonsense words. They're gonna come in handy later. And it's gonna be the exact same rhythm that we just clapped. The only difference is that instead of a repeat sign, you get another two lines of music because even though the rhythm is exactly the same and the notes are very similar, there's just a teensy tiny difference at the end of each of the lines. So you're gonna see it twice instead of as a repeat. Okay. Let's get started. Let's get singing. I'll sing a line and then you sing it back to me. Let's get our starting note. It's middle C for any of my piano students. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum. Biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Biddy 
Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum. Biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Good. So, before we go on, can you sing just those two lines with me all together? One, two, ready, go. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Good job, that is it. Okay, here is our third line. Bim bum, biddy biddy bum. Biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum, biddy biddy bum. Biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. All right, excellent. Can you do those two lines we just learned, the ones that are kind of similar, the third and the fourth line together, all together? One, two, ready, go. Bim. Bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Good. We're so close to getting to the fun part. Try the whole song together, okay? One. Two, ready, go. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Nice job. Okay, so as promised, last week, we're going to add some body percussion to it. So this is like part three. We did the rhythm, we did the melody, and now you have some moves to add. So here's where the words of the song come into play. If you have a bim, you're going to clap. If you have a bum, you're going to snap. And if you have a bitty, you're going to pat your knees or pat your legs. So. Let's give it a try. We don't have to sing it the first time. Let's just talk it through really slowly, okay? One, two, ready, go. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, Biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. 
Bim bum. Biddy biddy bum. Biddy bum. Biddy biddy bum. Bim bum. That's the whole song, okay? So now let's try it. Slow tempo, melody, and moves. One, two, ready, go. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Nice, you guys. Okay, so let's try it a little bit faster. See if you can do it. If clap, snap, pat doesn't work for you or bim, bum, biddy doesn't work that well for you, I also underline them in the color. So if red, blue, green, clap, snap, pat worked a little better for you, use that. All right, a little faster. One, two, ready, go. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum. Nice. Maybe just one more time. Maybe just one more time, a little, little bit faster. For some of you, I know that this is plenty fast. For others of you, I know that rhythm's your favorite part. You want a good challenge. You want to take it a little faster. So if that's you, let's do it one more time, okay? One, two, ready, go. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Good. So, if you have a sister or a brother or a, another fun family member who's up for a good game, you can turn this song into a game with a partner. Right? So, you'll teach your partner the song, teach them the moves, and then you'll face each other and you'll start at a very slow tempo. You'll start basically the way we started. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, just like that. And then the next time you sing it through, you'll take it a little faster, and then a little faster, and then a little faster, and then a little faster, and you two can see how fast you can go. And the person who messes up the movements first is the loser and the other person's the winner. Okay, so it's really, really fun. See how quickly you can take it. Bim bum, bim bum, biddy biddy bum, biddy bum, biddy biddy bum, bim bum. Whatever you can do, okay? And you'll get better at it as you go along. So that's our song for today. Hope you liked it. Okay, so we are going to pop on over to our composer of the month. It's a brand new composer. I'm really excited about this one. Our composer of the month is Gustav Holst. 
So Gustav Holst was born in 1874 and he lived till 1934. He was 59 years old. And what does that mean about what era he's from? This one's a little tricky, right? It's not quite as cut and dry as some of our other composers. I'm gonna go ahead and call him a modern era composer because the most famous composition he ever wrote and most of his famous compositions, the ones that were very well received, are from post-1918. So that puts him very firmly in the modern era. It's not a perfect science, but I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it modern era composer. He is from a country called England in Europe, and he was a very excellent trombone player. A little different from most of our composers. He was a very, very excellent trombone player. He even spent a lot of his life teaching trombone as a music teacher. So the piece that we're going to be looking at is the Planet Suite. So this is a collection of seven compositions, each about a different planet. And we're actually going to be spending all of our time on Holst on this one piece. We're gonna be looking at every single different movement. So some weeks we'll be doing two pieces, one of the weeks we'll be doing one, but we're gonna make it through every single one of them. So for some of my younger students, there are eight planets in our solar system. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The planet suite has seven movements because Holst didn't include Earth. He was talking about all the different planets that aren't our planet. And they're not quite in order the way we think about our planets. They're in a different order. It's Mars first, then Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And Gustav Holst, when he was writing this, he kind of gave every single planet a different personality based off of its colors, based off of the history of that planet in culture around the world. And we're going to take a look at all those different personalities. So this is a piece that is written for a big orchestra. So you're going to be able to hear a lot of different instruments, a lot of different colors and feelings throughout this entire piece. So the first planet we're going to be looking at is Mars. So Mars in the planet suite is considered the bringer of war. So this piece is going to be a little intense. It's got a really, really interesting time signature and that time signature is five, four. So that means five beats per measure, quarter note gets the beat. You know what's coming next, say it with me. Five beats per measure, quarter note gets the beat. Good, so I'm sure you've noticed that our most popular time signature when we're listening to music or performing music or doing our rhythms is four, four. One, two, three, four. When we have five, four, there's an extra beat to it. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Or in this case, ba 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 bum 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 bum. That's the opening rhythm that you're gonna hear. So to our ears that are really, really used to four four, it's gonna sound a little weird, a little uneven, a little stressful. And that's totally on purpose. It's totally to make you feel the way war feels. In this piece, the violins at the beginning do something very interesting. They play the strings of the violin with the back of the bow instead of the front of it, just like this picture in the corner of our screen. And that's going to sound a little bit like a percussion instrument, but there's still going to be some notes to it. It's a very interesting sound. Make sure you listen to it. It's the first bit of music that the violins play. It's the first little snippet of music that you hear in the whole piece. And 
This piece also features a lot of brass and percussion, the instruments from those families, which makes a lot of sense because if you listen to music that's written for battle, it usually features these different instruments because they're really loud. You could hear them from far away. So someone you were fighting with would be able to hear you from a really long distance and you could make it known that you were there. This piece actually reminds me a lot of Star Wars, maybe like the stormtroopers in Star Wars. It sounds a lot like the music they used for that movie. When you make music for a movie, it's called a film score. I, uh, I have a student, you know who you are, who keeps on asking if we can do John Williams as one of our composers, maybe in the future, but for now, this is very, very close. I think you'll agree. So let's take a listen. I love that one. I think it sounds so um, exciting, kind of evil, but in a in a fun way, in a fun movie kind of way. It also sounds kind of um, robotic to me, maybe because of the 5-4 time signature. So that is Mars, the bringer of war. And now it is time for Venus. So after Mars, the bringer of war, we have Venus the bringer of peace. Even if you look at this picture of the planet Venus, it feels so different from that picture of Mars. Mars is red and looks kind of angry. And Venus is this beautiful blue, purple, kind of magical color. And so Venus is the bringer of peace. So in contrast, after our 5-4, we have a 4-4 time signature for Venus. Four beats per measure, quarter note gets the beat. We're super comfortable with this time signature. So it's gonna feel a lot more peaceful from the very beginning. There's one, two, three, four. This piece is gonna open with a horn solo. And even though we think of brass as kind of loud, this solo could not be different from that. It's so light and peaceful. It's even hard to believe that it comes from a horn. But all of these different instruments can do a lot of different things. This piece is also going to heavily feature the harp in the left corner and the flute in the right corner of our screens. And all of those kind of twinkly, beautiful, light instruments. So let's give a listen to this peaceful Venus.
Isn't that one so different from Mars? That one's so delicate and peaceful and spacey. I think it's a perfect way to close off our music class because that's what we're about to do. I hope you like Holst and the planets. We're gonna be spending a lot more time with it during May. And now it's time to sing our goodbye song. See you later, alligator, after a crocodile. Bye bye, butterfly. I'll see you again next time. See you later, alligator, after a crocodile. Bye bye, butterfly. I'll see you again next time. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.